Welcome to the Ring of Faith. We're going to coach you on how to become a knockout artist in life. Today our show is called Going the Distance. What's it mean to go the distance in boxing? Going the distance means you're going the whole fight. You ain't giving up. You ain't quitting. You've trained hard. You've prepared in the gym. You've done all you need to do. And you're set on going the distance. If you got a 12 round fight, you're going 12 rounds. And that's what it means to go the distance. That's good. And in life, we need to have that same attitude. We need to be willing to go the distance. Stick around to hear more about going the distance. I will lift my hands. I will take a stand. I will shout your fame. I will praise your name. Welcome back to the Ring of Fate. Today our show is called Going the Distance. That's right. And sometimes in life we just need to go the distance. I remember a long time ago I was going through a really challenging time in my life. And, you know, thank God I had, you know, enough wisdom in me to turn to the Word of God. And I decided that I was going to read the Bible that year. I mean, I needed a huge life transformation. I mean, I needed... <laughs> yes, you did. I did. I needed my <laughs> mind renewed, you know, because nothing in my life was going the way I had dreamed it as a little girl. Everything was kind of going the opposite. And so I decided I was going to read the Bible that year. And I was so determined. And I read every single day the Word of God. I mean, I just kept reading. I never missed a day. I never missed a day. And I was like, I really wanted to do it in a year. And it ended up taking me a year and two hours. <laughs> but I was so determined to go the distance that I stayed up till 2 a.m. to make sure it was done. And yes, it was over by a couple yeah, yeah. hours, but I was That's pretty good. close. I tried, you know, but I was determined to, to go the distance. I made a commitment. I knew I needed my life changed. And so I stayed the course until I finished reading it. That's good. And the Word of God, I mean, I'm not saying you have to read the Bible through in a year. And you can get into God's mm -hmm. Word. He'll change you however He leads you to right. do. But this was something that she felt she needed to do. Mm -hmm. It was a discipline for her. And she got through it. And she was willing to go the distance in it. You know, Hebrews 4.12 says God's Word is alive. John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1, 1, God and His Word are one. So as you get into that alive Word of God, it's going to change you from the inside out. You're not gonna, you stay in that word. You're hungry and desperate for change. God's word will change you. That's good, all right. So Urban Dictionary, hey. Defi <laughs> <laughs> That's how you Gangster. prep the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. Defines, <laughs> you have to go to Urban Di Dictionary to find this <laughs> phrase, but it defines going the distance as completing something despite hardships. I mean, there's times in life you're going to have to, you know, complete something despite hardships. Yeah. Or you can quit in the middle of the hardships, as so many people do. Mm -hmm. And as we're all tempted to do yeah, yeah, yeah. at times in life. But no, we are to go the distance. There is a call from God specifically for you. Mm -hmm. There is a plan for your life. And we need to go the distance despite hardships. We, you know, look to the Bible, of course, for our examples of this and going the distance and there's so many people we could talk about, but we're going to talk about Paul today, and we're going to talk about Paul's finishing factors, because Paul was a finisher. Yeah. He was determined to live out his life once he, you know, received the call of God on his life. You know, he was determined to live, live it out strong. And number one, the first finishing factor is <laughs> Paul didn't have no in his heart. Paul was the original Joe Dirt. He was. He was determined. <laughs> he had no in his heart. <laughs> to finish. These are popular verses, but we wanted to bring them out today. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but one thing I do, forget those things that are behind and reach forward to that which is ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God 
in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He forgot what's behind. We've all got to forget what's behind mm -hmm. at some point. If we're Good or bad. Moving forward. Good or bad, you got to forget what's mm -hmm. behind and move forward. That's the way we're going to discover what God has for us next. we mm -hmm. got to keep moving forward. Forward. That's good. And Paul, I mean, many of you know the Bible, how he, you know, he used to persecute mm -hmm. Christians. And I mean, he was a, a mean guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't kill people and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's by the grace of God that I didn't. I'm not, that's the only reason I didn't. Cause I was, I was mm -hmm. just an idiot like that. I was just full of the devil before Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But Paul says, you got to forget what lies behind and you got to press toward the mark good or bad you can't change your past and god's grace is sufficient for you his power is made perfect in your weakness mm -hmm. you're forgiven now get up move on let go let go of the hurts let go of what was done to you what you've done to someone move forward and press toward that goal that's good anthony all right so more about paul philippians 1 21 through 24 it says for to me to live is christ to die is gain. You know, Paul was saying, you know, hey, you know, if I go on to see Jesus, praise the Lord. Yay. I mean, this is good news. But it says, but if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I live on, there is fruit. In other words, there was still work to be done. Mm -hmm. There's still fruit to be had. Mm -hmm. It says, yet what shall I choose? I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ. Mm -hmm. That's a good, you yeah. know. Thing to think about which is far better nevertheless to remain in the flesh is more needful for you he made a choice right mm -hmm. then he said no I know I'm not done I have not gone the distance there is more to be done there is more fruit to be had there are more souls to be saved there's more people that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ that's Paul good was a finisher and notice how Paul says what I shall choose, I cannot tell. You're not just destined for a day to die. You're not just locked in. No, he said, what I shall choose, I cannot tell. He's like, no, I'm going to finish my course. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. In context, he's talking about false prophets, but the devil is behind false prophets. And that's, that's what he is. He's a, he's a killer, a stealer, and a destroyer. And it's up to you and I not to allow him to steal our lives. That's good. What I shall choose, I cannot tell, but he said, I'm going to stay around for you. And I encourage you, there's somebody out there that needs you. You have purpose. Mm -hmm. There is a plan for you. And there's somebody out there that needs what only you have. You're an original. God made you. My Ephesians 2.10 says that we're his workmanship. One translation says his masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. God has a a master plan for only you that only you can fulfill. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be something like the world says is great, but to be a great husband, to be a great parent, to be a great employee, only you can do it. You are valuable. That's good, Anthony. You know, Love man. Love man. <laughs> Acts 20, 24 says, None of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself. Paul said, so that I may finish my race with joy. Paul was a finisher, and that's why we're talking about him today. But we, too, need to be willing to go the distance. That's the end of round one. Stick around. We'll be back with more Ring of Faith. I will lift my hands. I will take a stand. I like the way Christopher Morley said it. Things of the spirit differ from things material and that the more you give, the more you have. I can testify in my own life that the more I've blessed others, the more I've walked in the blessing of God. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God your source. Trust him in his word. Ring of Faith believes that your tithe belongs to your local church. But I encourage you to consider becoming a sparring partner with your reoccurring monthly gift. Go to www.ringoffaithtv.com and click on the donate tab to sow your financial seed. And that's how you can help others become a knockout artist in life. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today our show is called Going the Distance. And in the first round we were talking about Paul. 
Paul was definitely somebody who was willing to go the distance. But we were talking about Paul's finishing factors. And the second one is Paul kept on keeping on <laughs> despite hardships. And of course, he went through several hardships. And if you've read the New Testament, you've read about mm. some of these. And these are actually, we brought out three, but I mean, he went through a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his whole ministry was I hardship. Mean, <laughs> his whole thing was really, really hard. But number one, he was imprisoned. You know, and maybe you've been imprisoned, you know, and, you know, very few of us have been imprisoned for our faith. Mm. But, you know, this is what Paul dealt with. Philippians 1.19, a scripture that I know you were standing on years ago when you were in a similar situation. But, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Mm. Paul kept on keeping on. He was willing to go the distance even though he was imprisoned. Mm, That's good. You know, and, and, and the time he was in prison, I mean, there was some horrible horrible situations at mm-hmm. times, you know, at times they'd be waist high in the sewer. It would just run through their prisons. It was just so horrible. And, that's, and he wrote Philippians 4.4 4 in that too that says, Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. He kept on by choosing joy. Nehemiah 10 says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. That joy that he chose kept him going through these hard times and kept him going the distance. And that's the way that you and I are going to make it through. Now, joy is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.22, it says, love, joy, peace. It's in your spirit. He says, I say rejoice. You release that joy through your words. I count it all joy, according to James 1, 2, 3, 4. Mm -hmm. So you choose that joy, like Paul did. That's going to strengthen you to go the distance. He also had other hard, hardships. It says that he, he was stoned. And I'm not talking about this no, kind of stone. No. <laughs> he, he might like not. Rocks. Yeah. Throw rocks like, at him. Beat down, he was stoned. It says in Acts 14, 19, Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. That's not a good day. No. But he didn't quit. Mm-mm, he didn't die. Whatever he <laughs> kept, they kept beating him. It says he would beat with stripes on his back. I mean, they were just like nonstop. This was his whole, this is what he had to get up looking forward to. What's next? Yeah. But he says, rejoice in the Lord again. I say rejoice. He chose joy. He released it. And it kept him going on. That's good, Anthony. And of course, you know, another thing that, Paul had to deal with hardship wise is he was mocked. And some of you are mocking me out there. You can't lock lock love man. You can't. can't. There's something wrong with that. That, that, Yeah, that's that's demonic. (laughs) Yeah. That is demonic. (laughs) uh, Book of St. Anthony, chapter 12. (laughs) Demonic. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, 7 says, Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. He had a lot of revelations going on. People weren't too happy about it. He wrote most of the New Testament. (laughs) Exactly. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. And here's what that thorn was. A messenger of Satan sent to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. This messenger of Satan was just mocking him. Some of you may have small children that maybe copy after you or repeat after you. And it's, it's kind of cute, you know, for a while. And then it's kind of annoying. <laughs> but I imagine a grown person doing this to you, <laughs> like, all day long as you're trying to minister to the people. And you're receiving all these revelations. And it's like, oh, praise God, revelation. And boom. You know, and all this heckling. I mean, but this is what Paul dealt with. He was imprisoned, he was stoned, and he was mocked. And you might have dealt with one or two of these, but I doubt that many of you have dealt with all three. That's good. You know, and and I see this, like it says that there was a messenger of Satan. We've all, if we watch TV, seen like the paparazzi on the people in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. This was Paul's paparazzi. Just following him around all the time when they didn't have cameras back then. But sketch artist. <laughs> exactly. Here, John, look, look what Paul's doing today. They were very fast guys. <laughs> but it, just imagine that was like the old time paparazzi, nonstop. But he oh. he just kept on, and they were mocking him, making fun of him, throwing rocks at him. <laughs> it was like the old time uh, Ernest T. Bass. Yeah. Have you ever watched Andy Griffith? <laughs> Ernest T. Bass. He would like throw rocks through the windows. 
He had Ernest T. Bass and the paparazzi on him at all times. <laughs> that was pretty bad. That's, that's a bad day. That's a bad day right there. How did he ever go through? But he went the distance, distance and so can you. Amen. And we're going to help you finish strong. And here's how we're going to do it. You got to laugh. I know. You got to laugh. That helps. That helps. We should have added that. You know, you know. Gotta, that's how you finish strong. You just Enjoy laugh through it. it. Part of it. Yeah. All right. Number one way to finish strong for you. Recognize it is God in you that will help you win okay this is not a far off god that doesn't care about mm -hmm. your needs and your desires and your wants and your dreams this is recognizing if you're born again christian that god is in you and will help you win mm -hmm. philippians 1 6 says being confident of this very thing okay that's that's important too mm -hmm. be confident mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. check it out that he who has begun a good work in you in you will complete it till the day of jesus christ that work has begun in you. Mm. It is in you where it's mm. working. And of course, we you know we've talked about how we're spirit, soul, and body, and mm. we have a spirit that's already been made, you know, righteous, and we're completely complete, complete in Him. But of course, from the inside out, <laughs> we're being made into uh, everything that God has planned for each and every one of us. He has a perfect plan for our life, and so He is working in us. To execute that plan. Hebrews 12 2 it says looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We got to look unto Jesus. How do we do that? By looking into his word. As we keep his, our eyes on the word, our eyes of faith, that's going to keep us going. When Peter got out of the boat to walk on the water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on the water. Mm -hmm. As long as you and I keep our eyes on Jesus, which is the word, the promises of God, we're going to walk above the circumstances. Maybe you've been knocked down in your life a time or two. Yo, I didn't hear no bell. You got one more round. You have one more round. No matter where you are in your life, you've got one more round. And the best is yet to come. That's right, and we've got one more round too, so stick around for more Ring of Faith. I will lift my hands, I will take a stand. Hi, here at Ring of Faith, we are encouraging our viewers to hope. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, to give you a future filled with hope. Hope is positive imagination, and when connected to your faith, your calling is without limitations. What has God created you for? We challenge you to get your hope up and fuel your faith for God's calling on your life. Go to ringoffaithtv.com for our latest hope-filled messages and power-packed weapon of the week. Welcome back to the Ring of Fate. Today our show is called Going the Distance. That's right, Anthony. We've been talking about how you can go the distance. And of course, we talked about how God is working in you. And that's you have to recognize that. And that's one way we can finish strong. But another way we can go the distance is to recognize He has equipped us with all that we need to finish. He's equipped us with everything, including the fruit of the Spirit, right? Mm, that's good. You know, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 the fruit of the Spirit is love, man, joy, <laughs> peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. This is all on the inside of you and your born-again spirit. Joy, peace, faith, and Galatians 2.20 is the faith of God. You have the faith of God as a born-again child of God. To move mountains, according to Mark 11.23. Whatever the circumstances or the mountains or the problems, you have God's faith. He's working in you. He's for you. Philippians mm -hmm. 2.13, it's God working in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. His good pleasure is to see you win. His good pleasure is to see you succeed. Like we talked about before, uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14, that He's always leading and guiding us in triumph. He's leading you in triumph in whatever your area of life is. He wants you to succeed. He's for you. He loves you. And that's why he gave us that fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. so that we could be like him. If he's put that in our spirit, it's because he's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, good. He's all that. And a bag of chips. 
That's right, Anthony. He has equipped us. He's given us everything that we need. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Not even just equipped, but thoroughly mm. equipped. We have more than enough. We have more than everything that we need to live out this life, to finish strong. He's not going to give us a call in our life that we aren't able to fulfill. He loves us. He's given us his word. He's given us his name. He's given us his blood. He's given us his uh, spirit, the fruit of the spirit. Luke 17, 21 says the kingdom of heaven is within us. As a born again child of God, as we get into that word, we start renewing our minds to what we have. We start living out what he's planned for us. According to Ephesians 2, 10, that path, we start walking on the path. Not saying that it's not coming with opposition. Because there is a demonic realm out there that's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. But the good news is, the greater one lives on the inside of you and I. When we start standing in strong in the faith, start believing in what God has done for us and who we are in Christ, we are going to rule and reign. We are overcomers. We're more than conquerors. We start believing that, we start speaking that, we start walking it out. That's good, Anthony. That's a great way to go the distance. Mm. All right. So we've been talking about how you can go the distance and we're talking about recognizing God working in you and how he's thoroughly equipped you. And we talked about the fruit of the spirit and he also gave us his whole armor. You can read about that in Ephesians 6 verses 13 through 18, how we have the armor of God. I mean, I can't think of a better armor to have <laughs> to go the distance, but of course we have the armor of God. But now we want to talk about our ultimate example in the Bible of someone who went the distance and finished strong. And his mm. name is Jesus. The ultimate. And we want to give you just very quickly today just a few things about how he was able to go the distance. And number one is Jesus was kingdom minded. John 18 36 says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from here. He was kingdom-minded. He was thinking about the bigger picture. Mm. We too can think about the bigger picture in life. It's not just about our little bitty hole and our little bitty problem that we're going through. And I'm not minimizing a problem you might be facing. We all go through challenges in our life. But I encourage you to think bigger. Mm. Think kingdom-minded. Think about... Who can I bless today? Think about, God, where is my place? What can I do for you? How can I further the kingdom of God? How can I make a difference in someone's life today? And I encourage you to be kingdom-minded just like Jesus. That's good. Luke 2, 49 says, And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And God was about business. Jesus was taking care of business. That's right. He is TCB. Hey. TCB. <laughs> that's where Elvis got it from. He exactly. was taking care of business, and that's what he came for. Mm -hmm. Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, Jesus speaking, he came to destroy the works of the devil, taking care of business. He was taking care of his father's business when he was destroying the works of the devil. Galatians 1, 4, he came to deliver us from this present evil age, kingdom minded, taking care of his father's business. John 10, 10, when he gave us life in it more abundantly, taking care of the Father's business, destroying the works of the devil. You know, and the second thing we want to talk about with Jesus, he not only was kingdom-minded, he knew who he was. Mm. John 18, 6 says, Now when he said to them, I am, they drew back and fell to the ground. I mean, Jesus was saying, I am. In other words, I am God. I am. Uh, he knew who, who he was. Mm. And when you know who you are, you too can go the distance. You can be kingdom minded. If you know who you are in Christ, that's going to equip you to know that you can reign in this life. You can be victorious and you can go the distance despite hardships. You can keep going and you can keep on keeping on. That's so good. You know, Philippians 2 5 says, To let this mind be in you, that which was also in Christ Jesus, who didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He came in the form of man. Let this mind be in you. I am. You're not God, but I am. You're a, you're a child of the Most High God, and I am lives on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. So when you rise up knowing who you are, that you are 
am, you can go the distance. That's good, Anthony. All right, so the third reason, real quickly, that Jesus was able to go the distance is because he went the distance for you. Mm. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, too, we talked about it earlier, but part of that verse says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He wasn't thinking about the pain. He wasn't thinking about the nails. <laughs> he wasn't thinking about the bruises. He wasn't thinking about the wounds. He wasn't thinking about the shame. He wasn't thinking about the ridicule. The Bible says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's what he was focused on. He was focused on you, and he mm, was focused on me. And that's how he was willing to go the distance, because he loves you so mm. much. And if you don't know him, we encourage mm. you. We're going to tell you here in just a few minutes how you too can go the distance with him. Now it's time for... The Weapon of the Week! The Weapon of the Week this week is Luke 2.52. It says that Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and man. Take this scripture, make it personal to yourself. Say, I grow in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. Say it 10 times in the morning, 10 times at night, and all throughout the day. Build your faith in the favor of God. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're going to give you an opportunity to make a decision that will forever change your life. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you'll confess Jesus as your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. I'm going to pray this prayer. I encourage you to say it with your mouth, to mean it from your heart. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Sin, I turn my back on you. Sin, I turn my back on you. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no man can say Jesus is Lord. Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. And if you've been blessed by this ministry, we want to hear from you. Go to ringoffaithtv.com. Renew your mind to God's word by seeing, saying, and believing his promises. And that's how you become a knockout artist in life. Uh, I'm Israel. I'm Crystal. Welcome to Remove Training. All right, this is the warm-up floor. Uh, this is where we spend the first uh, 20 minutes of our group training sessions. All right, welcome to the strength portion of our floor. Welcome to the conditioning part of our floor. This is where people who love to sweat, this is their favorite place in the workout. 